Welcome back to Jay's studio and today our, for this video we're going to continue in our uh, effort to calibrate the ER20 printer uh, using Teaching Tech 3D printer calibration and some other resources um, and today's topic is going to be acceleration and jerk uh, tuning. So um, these are both covered on a single page uh, called acceleration tuning on your, uh, once you get to uh, teachingtechyt.github.io, link down in the description, um, and we're following kind of the green brick road, and we've gotten to acceleration tuning at this point. We just finished up uh, retraction tuning and temperature tuning, and now we're ready to do our acceleration and jerk uh, tuning. So these um, these are uh, very important settings. Acceleration is, is what happens while printing, right? Is it, it's moving from a starting point towards a given printing speed. Let's say you're printing at 50 millimeters per second. As it makes a turn or as it reverses, or as your, your print head reverses direction, it's going to accelerate at a certain millimeter per second speed up to that 50 millimeters per second if it's doing a regular print move or something along that line. So, uh, what you're tuning is for the best performance while uh, printing with those acceleration rates. Um, the other uh, the other thing we're going to be tuning or looking at today is tuning uh, for jerk, uh, right? And this is what happens when the printer uh, either stops or shifts direction, so it has to stop and then change direction to another direction, uh, how it's handling those particular sets of corners and or stops and reversals, um, and jerk is the classic setting for that. Now, having said that, when we get to that point, realize that the ER20 being a more recently put together printer with the with 2209 drivers, 32-bit board, and appropriate Marlin firmware uses junction deviation instead of classic jerk, but that's all right. I, so if I refer to it as jerk tuning, it's because I've tuned other printers that use classic XY jerk values, um, but we're going to be tuning for a single variable, which is junction deviation. So, as before in these pages, um, we are going to move down to the G-code generator. Now, at the top of this uh, acceleration tuning page, um, you're going to go through a few videos, etc., and then it's going to talk about calculating maximum feed rate. This is only applicable if you're trying to get the fastest possible feed rate out of your printer. Um, so if you've, you've bought the ER20 for use in a print farm, um, and you really want to, uh, you know, maybe you're doing this as a business, um, but you're, or you're getting ready to do this as a business and you want to print at the fastest rate possible, um, then calculating your maximum feed rate is important. I'm skipping through this because I'm not interested in calculating my max feed rate. Um, this is a hobby for me. Um, I, make, I, I want to have fun printing cool models um, and I don't need to worry about uh, maximum feed rate. So uh, I'm just going to move down to this uh, the G-code generator here when we get to acceleration tuning is where we, we kind of start uh, about a third of the way through the page. And it's going to talk to you about, um, first of all, figuring out what acceleration you actually have right now um, in, your tu in your printer. And uh, it's going to talk about um, getting a printer variable, you know, entering 503 via, sorry about my arm, entering 503 via terminal, give a list of printer variables. Well, we have a per terminal program we've been using, which is Pronterface, and I have Pronterface up at this particular point in time, and it's connected to the printer, um, as you can see from all the messages over here. So I'm gonna type down on my command line, uh, M503, that's M as in Mike, 503, and hit return, and all my variables are gonna come up over here, and I can look for my acceleration line and my junction deviation line. And that's gonna be M204 and M205 respectively. Uh, M204 is right up here. I'll move the camera nice and close. Um, there's M204 and it's showing me that the print acceleration is 1200, retraction is 1200 and travel is 1200. And if I look at M205, it's if I go all the way to the right, that J value is the junction deviation and at zero point, this says 0 0.05. If you are tuning your ER20, um, you, you're tuning your ER20 printer, your, your default is probably right now 0 0.03. Um, doesn't matter because we're gonna tune and enter in the best value that's gonna be there. So uh, that's what our values are right now. So we can go back to 
uh, this G-code generator. And the first thing you're gonna do is print a print that's gonna tune for acceleration. So to do this, as before, you're gonna enter your start G-code, uh, whatever that is from your Cura or your Simplify 3D. Uh, you're gonna enter that in this box right, right here. Um, so that if, in this case, I like the prime line that ER20, the ER20's uh, start G-code does, so I, co I copy that in here. 250 by 220 for the bed. I'm gonna start with 230 and then I'm gonna manually drop to our temperature tune 215, uh, which, we decided, which we figured out in our temperature tuning in the previous video. Uh, bed temperature 65 and I will drop that to 60 after the first layer uh, manually while the print is going on. 100% fan once it gets on uh, to a particular layer. And then remember we tuned our retraction to be four millimeters at 45 millimeters per second. So we've got our retraction entered appropriately here. And then it's gonna have, I just accept the, I accept the default, I believe it's 60 for the base feed rate of millimeters per second. If you're never gonna print at 60 millimeters per second, maybe you wanna lower that to 50 or something like that. I just left it at default and just go from there. Next, it's gonna ask, hey, are you gonna use for acceleration um, is great, but what about for jerk and junction deviation? What does your printer use? Now, I just told you that we use junction deviation, so you're gonna have to put, you're gonna have to select junction deviation, and then our little generator for the variables over here is going to show junction deviation. If we select jerk, it's gonna select classic jerk, jerk X and jerk Y. Um, we don't want that, we want junction deviation, so we'll come over here and enter uh, what we need to. So this is showing uh, what I, um, this is showing my second print, which was to calculate junction deviation. Um, so let me just, if you can, just suspend in your mind. What I did is I put the, the 0 0.03 in every single line over here, uh, which for the junction deviation, because the first thing I wanted to tune for was acceleration. So with 0 0.03 in, in the junction deviation over here, uh, I then... Uh, over an acceleration started with 1200, or sorry, I started with uh, 1300 as just a little bit faster than my default acceleration. For the E block, I put 1200. Remember that value we just took from the terminal program. Then I went to 1100, then I went to 1000, then I went to 900, then I went to 800. Um, and this was my first print. Uh, right over here, you say download G-code. Uh, that gets downloaded onto your SD card. And then uh, this print takes a little bit longer than the other prints we've done in, in the series. It takes probably 45 to 50 minutes to finish the print. And let me show you the results of my acceleration print uh, now. So what the print will print is this kind of box, like triangular box. Um, and it's got a number of, uh, of like details on the surface that you're going to look at. Primarily, you're going to be looking at it's the way it reproduced these letters. Um, so here we have uh, X, um, sorry, let me get this. Yep, here we have X's, and then on the adjacent side, we'll have Y's. Let me get that to focus. Boy, it doesn't want to focus on that, does it? There we go. Uh, we'll have Ys on this uh, this particular surface. And then in on other surfaces, there's like lines drawn on this very small surface. And then there's like a, a small triangular indentation uh, at this stage. But you're going to be able to get uh, what, what you want off of looking at the Xs and the Ys. Um, and in my case, um, unlike some of the other steps, for me, the results were fairly clear here. Um, if I look at all those Xs, and I'm looking at artifacts on both sides of the X's. Let me get it back in. So if I look at the artifacts, and you can kind of see the artifacts to the right, um, as well as some of the ghosting to the left, for me, it was fairly clear that the third one from the top uh, was the best. Let me see if I can get the Y's, because the Y's even showed it even... There we go. Check that out. Um, for me, when I looked at the ghosting as well as the artifacts around the, and, and the letters themselves, uh, the third from the top, uh, was the best formed out of all of them. Um, and then I went back to the X's and if that would stay in focus, that would be great. 
Um, that's pretty easy to see there that the third from the top is the best formed X. Um, so again, third from the top for me, going back here, was 1100 for my acceleration. So what I did uh, to load that acceleration was go back into my Pronterface program here, went down to my command line, right down here, and I'll go M204. Remember M remember 204 line, and if you, if you forget, just go up here in your 503 that you did before, and that shows you your acceleration. It's an M204 line. So my M204 P1200, or 1100, now that I've found my correct acceleration, or the best acceleration, I'll enter that, and then I will enter M500 to save it. And now I have saved my print acceleration as 1100. And let me go ahead and type an M503 command just to make sure it's in there. And sure enough, when I go to the top, M204, P1100, R1200, T1200. I'm going to leave the travel and the retract uh, uh, acceleration the same. I don't, I, I, I don't need to slow those down uh, and, and slow down prints for no reason. Uh, but the print acceleration, I want to be uh, appropriately optimized. So what do we do next? Uh, next, we come back to, don't need to change anything else on this page other than make everything in these boxes 1100. So just filling out 1100 in all of these boxes. Uh, so we basically we're holding, holding fixed the variable of acceleration. And now we're going to vary the uh, the uh, junction deviation to tune for junction deviation. And here I did uh, a number of things um, th to kind of spread it out. And I don't, I just cleared out this, so I'm not going to remember exactly uh, the way it was, but I believe I had 0 0.09 here, and then I had point zero five and point zero well no maybe point zero seven point zero five point zero three and point zero one I think I did like one two or something like that um because I thought that it you know who knows it might be a, you know some some machines with junction deviation are fairly low uh, in in their uh, training here or in the way they do things. So I did the junction deviation this way um, and uh, it came out to be for me, let me go grab my print. My print for junction deviation again showed that uh, for artifacts, etc. Again, it would be great if you would focus. There we go. The third one down for me, again, looked better than any of the others um, in on there. And then I went to the Ys uh, to see what happened there. And sure enough, um, again, most of the artifacts on these, the, the ones down below had artifacts on both sides of the Y. And then, um, then the, just the formation of the Y itself and the artifacts was still better on the third one down. So I decided on a junction deviation of 0 0.05 um, for, for my uh, final total. So again, what do I do with junction deviation? Uh, to enter it in my firmware, I come back over to Pronterface. I look at the M205 line, which right now says J0.05, and it's correct. That was not what it was before. So let me do it like it was before, M205, J, um, 0.03. Sorry, M205, J, 0.03. All right, and now if I M503, it shows in my M205 line that I have a junction deviation of 0 0.03. I had decided 0 0.05 was better for this particular printer. So I'll put M205, J0.05, and enter that, save it with an M500 command. And at this point, I can go M503 to check my EEPROM. And sure enough, again, now that if I go up to my M205 line, my junction deviation is 0.05, which is exactly what I want. 
Um, that's the way you do acceleration and junction deviation training or, or uh, junction deviation uh, testing uh, and calibration. Uh, so hopefully that was helpful. We'll see you for the next video when we're going to talk about linear advance. Uh, linear advance is a, to, is, is a pressure regulation uh, algorithm that uh, is enabled in more, uh, more recent printers. So we're going to work on uh, that, uh, that calibration here in just a second. Uh, take care, and we'll see you for the next one. Uh, oh, I should mention, please press like and subscribe. Uh, I would like to continue testing and putting together uh, 3D printers to help users uh, actually get the most out of their printers. It's a hobby for me. It's not a job. Uh, but it would be uh, the more you like and subscribe, the more I think I'll be given the opportunity to test some of these printers. Take care.